This is a Wonderland, which is, um, it was a series of eight pictures, which I sort of cut down a little bit. So this is Ireland. <clears throat> this is where I live in Dublin. This is County Donegal, and this is Northern Ireland. A lot of people think that this is all Northern Ireland, and then this is all the Republic or the Southern Ireland. And as a consequence, they don't, all people from here won't go, just don't go up here for holidays or to visit much. But a lot of people from Northern Ireland would come across it's a very dramatic coastline. It's a very lovely place to go to. Um, but it's kind of forgotten. And I've, it's always, for me, it's always been this kind of area that is more about a state of mind, perhaps, than actually the physical being of the, of the land. <clears throat> um, and it's why I was calling it Wonderland, really. So what I wanted to try and do was just give a feeling of, of being there without describing really very accurately what it looks like. Um, so these are shots uh, done at, uh, in, the, in the evening, lit by moonlight. You can see all the stars, a little bit of movement on the clouds. Trying to evoke a feeling more than um, a sense of place. And then this is uh, just a little um, jetty where you get a, a ferry out to one of the islands. Really violent storm one day. And again, it's just this, the whole movement. Um, <clears throat> technically, a shot camera on a tripod, about a half a second exposure, gives movement, but just also keeps shape uh, overall, really. That's probably the most descriptive shot. Um, and again, this is the coastline with these beautiful beaches. This was shot when it was raining. It rains a lot in Ireland, in case you didn't know. And you almost have to work out how to shoot in dull or wet conditions because they happen a lot. So this was just coming into the evening, chucking out of the heavens. Um, and I just sort of gave it this misty, monotone look, which I really liked. And again, a little town, a little town just on the west coast, all in the same sort of area of Donegal. And this was, this, just by chance I came across this map, and this is County Donegal. <clears throat> which looks like a little island. It's not connected to anything, it's floating there. This actually says, you are here. But there's no detail anywhere of, of where here is. <laughs> so it, it kind of encapsulated for me this idea that you're in, you're in a space that's more in your head, really, than a, than a physical space. Because you can see that's the shape of it. Um, and yet, it's not connected to anything. <clears throat> Um, and then this is the last body of work I'll show you, which is Under a Grey Sky, which is a project I started. It took me nearly, um, nearly four years on and off to do this project in between working and various other commitments that, that we all have, really. Um, and it's based in the central plain of Ireland. <clears throat> so in this area, very low-lying area. Um, the River Shannon runs through here. I, and I've got some details here. It, it's an area of raised bogs, which have developed over the last 30,000 years. Uh, and the bogs develop as vegetation just dies and falls into the water, and slowly it decays, and these build up. Um, and they actually build up to about 30 feet deep. Um, so they're, they're called raised bogs. They come up, and they actually, the horizon line is almost like this. They rise up in the middle, and the, the edges, they, they come down. <clears throat> Um, and then they're used uh, for, there's a, a state-owned company called Board Namona, which is the peat board, and they will then use this. It's kind of in between, I don't know if you're familiar with peat, uh, in a hardened form. It's like going towards coal, but it's not at coal, at coal stage yet, really. <clears throat> um, and they take it off about two or three inches at a time. It dries it just naturally in the, in the air. It gets pushed into these big, long piles. And then that's taken off to use in a um, uh, electricity generating power station. And they're the most amazing um, landscapes, I think, because one, Ireland never looked like this. Ireland is green and little fields. And, um, and two, um, they're so sort of barren and so open that uh, almost just the little smallest things make the big dif a big difference in the shot. Um, and they'll all be gone in about 15 years because this will all just be taken away. They just take it down two inches at a time. They go down, 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 down. And then it's gone and it's covered over. So it's a bit like open cast mining, really. This would be one that's sort of depleted, as they call it, where they can go down as far as they can. And they get into rock and gravel and marl 
But again, for me, it's just the black landscape and the gray sky. I only photographed really during the winter because in the summer it becomes quite red, which didn't really work with what I wanted to do. Um, I wanted to keep it to this, uh, this very definite. What I also did was, um, <clears throat> all of these landscapes are shot with the horizon line done at, at, at the same point. So there's not a horizon line here or there. It's all kept consistent. <clears throat> And if there was any blue sky, I used to just desaturate a wee bit in Photoshop just to take it back more to these, these monotones. Um, and then I also photographed people who lived there. Um, people had moved there, people had been born there. But they all seemed to, they, you know, it's a pretty bleak place really, but people really like living there. Some people like living there. Um, this guy, his father had moved there. His father was a retired opera singer and he had moved there. Um, and uh, he, uh, Joachim had lived there, he's a, he's a sculptor, he'd lived there for a good part of his life. And again, with, even within that, he's trying to keep it all very simple, backgrounds quite simple. That looked like a cross, he looked a bit like Jesus. Um, so that made, it, that made it quite interesting, really. Uh, this would be a little local town, um, which a lot of people really, all these peat bogs used to be done uh, cut by hand and there would be hundreds of people working on them. It's now done by machines um, and these people would have lived in little small towns just dotted around. <clears throat> and you do, you know, I, I, this is all shot on a 5.4 camera with a big tripod and you're walking around and you just know there are people, that, you know, just pulling back the curtain going, what's... I used to always tell people that a new road was going through and that they were doing a survey. <laughs> um, and they go, really? And you go, no, no, not really. And then they'd be okay, you know. Um, but I think you have to have a, a certain sense of humour with them, really. <clears throat> so the bogs are they private land? They're state-owned land. State -owned. They would have been private-owned, and then the state had slowly been buying them up. And they're vast, vast areas, really. Of uh, so you had to have access. Yeah. And I went to Board Namona, um, who own most of this land, and I. <clears throat> said I want to do this photographic project and I asked their permission really and they said yes and they put me in touch with a local man who then showed me around so so you were you were with somebody well once he had shown me around and said okay this is this and that's that then he said off off you go um, some areas that I wasn't allowed into some areas he was with me um, so these little towns this always reminds me somehow of some sort of American influence um, really even, this was in a lavatory, so even the lavatory had a lovely little curtain and little, like a little stage almost really, and just a little window. <clears throat> it's kind of this attention to detail. And I was, I was sort of telling the story earlier today. I always wanted to try and photograph people in their natural state, in their, in their normal clothes. And sometimes if you go and talk to people, they say, come back tomorrow. And then they get changed and they have their hair all. <clears throat> and you think, I don't really want to do that. So this was an fish and chip shop, a, a fast food shop. And I went to the owner who owned, uh, and said, listen, I'm doing this project and I want to do some photographs of people as they come in to order their food. And I'll come back tomorrow and set up some lights. So I went back in, it's quite a small area, and just set up some lights and set up the camera and had everything ready. So when people came in, I would just say, can I take your photograph? And they'd go, uh, um, okay. And you go, stand there. And they would stand there and you'd go immediately and click the photograph and take it. And they didn't really have time to think too much um, about what it was all about, how they looked, even their expression. And it worked, I mean, some people refused, obviously, some people weren't interested. Um, most people were, and it was a really good way to do it, actually, because there was just no preamble. It was just, come on over here, it takes two seconds, two sheets of film, and that's it, thank you very much. Um, This man always reminds me of Martin Parr for some reason, right? <laughs> Downcast, but uh, <laughs> um, he worked again. He'd worked in this area all his life. Really, he was an engineer there, <clears throat> and he uh, was just about to retire. Really classic clothing. He was quite a downcast sort of man, really a very friendly man. But I think he he just he working in a in a in a workshop all of your life. The same one must be really hard work. Um, these are, uh, this is a factory that produced these peat briquettes, as they're called, which, which you buy and burn on your fire. Um, 
this is more just a little bit of context really within it. When I, went, when I saw these palettes there, I thought, I just want to photograph the palettes. I think they look great. <clears throat> and I said, I was very closely watched when I was doing this. And I said to the, the guy who was with me, can I photograph these palettes? And he said, um, um, yes, but why don't we come and have a cup of tea first? And we went to a little canteen. And I could see this through the window. And there was a man pulling off all this plastic sheeting and tidying the whole thing up so it looked really neat and tidy. And then he said, and, and, and he said, okay, we can go and photograph it now. Um, <clears throat> so all, uh, he left a few, he, these were too far away, really. He didn't, but again, it's the whole thing about when you suddenly put um, a camera in front of something, of something very ordinary, how people really start to react and how they, they become self-conscious, even if it's not a picture of themselves, it's just some palettes, really. Uh, Every winter, the, the whole area, most of the area flooded to like two or three feet of water. Um, so again, this is just a flooded, uh, the river's about maybe a mile or two in that direction. Mm. Uh, some people still hand cut turf. Uh, so this kind of would be cut with a, a spade and people would use it, um, they would dry it. These are pieces of, of turf that are cut and they'll use it. Um, but what this really showed for me was this is maybe 5,000 years of depth here because that's how long it would take for the, you know, the trees to fall over and fall down. And, and so this is a real, this is a time scale. And even, you know, I, I, I don't know enough about it, but the different colors must have been at certain time periods. Things must have happened. So it's not really um, about what it's about. It's about time, if that makes sense. Uh, and then, uh, whenever it's all taken away, the land is reclaimed. So this, <laughs> this is actually a fishery where you can go and fish. And they had sort of grassed it over and made a pond here and another bigger pond here. Probably the most uh, miserable place you could go and want to fish. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it doesn't really look very exciting. It reminds me of the pond by John Gossage, actually. Um, <clears throat> but by putting uh, a picnic table in, that was the only sort of reference to this is now a recreation area. Um, so this is what's down underneath. And again, you can see the distance there, just the vast amount of space that's taken up. Um, some of it then has been reclaimed. This is a, a rifle range, so it's been put into use again. And this is all grass now. This was just, just really happened when I arrived. <clears throat> but again, very abstract, very bizarre sort of shapes, really. Um, And again, around this, there's just the local rural, the rural community going on. <clears throat> this was just looked like a primitive painting to me, really. The, the sort of crudeness, the way it's done, the colours, the sort of slightly scary face, actually. <clears throat> um, this little girl, uh, Sorka, um, again lived in the area. And really, her face and her head, I just found amazing. Um, there was some sort of real purity or something that I, I, I just, it, it, it was very, it's also her head, her head's quite big, if you notice, compared to her body, but I think that's more kids are more like that. <clears throat> um, but again, with her, I set it all up and she, I had to wait till she got really bored before I took the photograph, because again, it's trying to get rid of the idea of her standing rigid and the flash going off. So I just spoke to her mother, <clears throat> um, who was sitting beside me and eventually she started get, getting bored and started doing this with her hands. And at that point, you think that's, that's the time to take the photograph. Uh, this tree represents supposedly the very center of Ireland and it marks the center of Ireland in this area. Uh, well, in this area. Whether it does or not, I don't know. But again, there's this, uh, compared to the open spaces of the boglands, this is a really encompassing uh, a tree. So even though it's based in a, in, in a geographical area and I'm looking at, at that, I'm, not, I'm also looking at other people there. I'm looking at what life is for people there, what people might see there, almost trying to see it a little bit through their eyes as well, I think. Um, and again, this was kept really simple. Black to try and again echo the, the black of the bogs and just a really open space again like the sky. And with all the people, uh, to get a consistency and a sort of rhythm going, I always photograph them roughly the same size in the, in the frame and um, three-quarter length. 
uh, all on a standard lens. Uh, again, they, this, these are actually drainage ditches that they, 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 they put in every 40 feet across. It takes about, they put the, these ditches are quite deep, maybe about 10 feet deep. It takes four years for each bog to drain sufficiently that they can put machinery onto it. And they're constantly draining the water out. <clears throat> Uh, and then within it, they do find lots of things. I mean, people bodies have been found there. Uh, butter has been found there. These are the roots of, um, yeah, butter in, a, in like a, a barrel. Um, these are tree roots which, uh, from a pine tree, which just is such an alien sort of thing, and yet it's the most natural thing maybe in an alien environment. <clears throat> this is just tractor marks tractors turning, coming in and out. There's a little railway system here, and it's just up over the horizon, but it was just wet, and they again just created these um, quite painterly uh, patterns. I, I mean, I, the aesthetic interests me a lot as well, and colors are very important to me. Um, I've done quite a lot of work on the color in some of these, just to get it into an area where it's quite drab and it's quite flat and yet it has a depth and a, a, a quality to it. <clears throat> Back to the shooting range. And this is actually how they store the turf. Big long uh, lines. This is quite a, a powdery sort of uh, material. And then this is plastic sheeting that goes over the whole lot <clears throat> just to protect it in the winter, keep it, to dr keep it dry. And again, has a very, it has a, this is actually black, but the sky is reflecting in it so much it, it looks white. So um, you put down plastic just to keep it? To keep it dry through the winter, yeah. yeah. And again, these just these big draining, drainage ditches. And again, the same horizon line. Um, this was uh, uh, one of the re, uh, a retired man who worked there all his life, made this little model of milled peat and it's <laughs> I mean it's a little handmade bottle it's a beautiful little thing again it's almost like a, a piece of primitive art really and it just shows the whole process of clearing the land stripping it the little uh, trains that come and take it away um, and write down the whole process so that was in the canteen and really it's that was a, a really quite a beautiful thing um, a piece of folk art in a way but nobody really it was over in the corner and everybody nobody really paid much attention to it <clears throat> You didn't move that to the... No, no, that was there. I put a little bit of light on it, but that was it. And then they have little uh, tea houses where, uh, again, the areas are so big, it's too far to travel. So they'll take their lunch in a, in, a, in a little box and sit in these little small tea houses on what they call islands, which are just a little area covered, uh, surrounded by trees. Um, so it's all this, it's almost like this idea of being at sea and there are islands and there are... <clears throat> Again, framed really very, shot three quarter framed very simply. I mean, there are beautiful colors um, in these places, actually very washed out, very pale colors, quite old colors, but very beautiful colors. Um, and it's just trying to work, work with them as opposed to work against them. And then this was in the local town. This is a circus, obviously comes to town. And I just included this because it was the complete opposite of what you're seeing on the, on the bogs. It's light, it's fun, it's colorful. It has an aspirational um, quality for children. Um, it was just like it, it needed this sort of thing to come every year, just to, to, to liven up the area. Mm. Again, this is towards the where it's been disused for years and, and regrowing into. Uh, And again, this is all just, uh, so again, horizon line, see. I actually, it took me quite a long time to realize to do this, to, 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 to sequence the book and to keep the horizon lines the same and to, and to try and make it work um, as a cohesive uh, piece of work, really. And then this is the very last one. Again, this is actually the power station behind there. This is a type of flower called bog cotton. This looks to me like a sort of, landscape that King Arthur and his knights could just be going into and disappearing off to their castle or whatever. Um, it just has this mystery and yet it's so simple, it's just land 
and sky and that's really it and when you do photograph in those sort of areas and they do fascinate me it's just you the land and the sky that's it there isn't really much else to photograph so how do you approach it it's so simple it becomes really difficult and it becomes quite a challenge to photograph it and yet i think it it, it um it can offer so much at the same time so that's it thank you very much for your time and coming out tonight <clears throat>